Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here and something of a warning for dividend investors in today's video. You know we love us some dividend stocks here in the nation, but a lot of these are misleading investors as high yield traps that destroy your portfolio. For example, look at shares of Great Elm Capital with an astonishing 14% dividend yield. Not bad until you consider the stock has fallen 65% over the last five years completely wiping out the yield and then some. Not only is your investment incinerated in the crash, but the dividend is cut along with the shares, leaving you with a yield that is a fraction of what you expected. In this video, I'll show you how to pick dividend stocks for the best return on yield and share price, how to find the dividend stocks that will grow your portfolio and put cash in your pocket. Then I'll reveal the seven dividend stocks I'm watching right now with the best total return over the last five years. Before we get started, I want to thank Aura for sponsoring this video. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. Aura monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers and sends alerts fast right to your phone and email. Nation, identity theft is the fastest growing crime in America with a new victim every four 14 seconds, and researching this struck me as really how unprepared we really are. For example, more than 15 million cases of identity theft are reported each year, almost 15 times more than the 1.2 million cases of home burglary. And while you wouldn't dream about leaving your home unlocked, how many people leave their personal information totally unlocked online? Aura monitors all three credit bureaus to make sure no one is taking out loans or other credit in your name, and can even instantly lock your Experian credit. When I signed up, I was surprised to find Aura immediately found three instances of my personal information on the dark web for sale, including my email address and logins to other accounts. It takes less than five minutes to sign up and verify your identity. Aura will automatically find accounts to link and then start searching for your personal information on the web. With a simple setup, you can monitor your passwords and get antivirus protection for you and your family. Aura is also now offering a free 14-day trial, so look for the link I'll leave below or go to aura.com slash joseph and try it out. If you do sign up for identity theft protection, let me know in the comments below how many times Aura found your information for sale on the dark web. I want to jump right into our list of highest return dividend stocks, so I'm going to show you how I found these and what to watch for later on. I'm ranking these from the lowest to highest total return, so stick around because the last stock pays a 5% dividend yield and is up almost 300% just in the last five years. The first dividend stock has been one of my favorites and the highest return in the S&P 500 last year, Devon Energy, ticker DVN. Devon is a leading oil producer in three states, North Dakota, Texas, and Delaware. And with oil spiking over the last two years, these assets have become cash flow machines. And like most companies, Devon is choosing to return that cash to shareholders rather than acquiring other assets at those higher prices. Free cash flow quadrupled since its merger with with WPX last year and it's forecasting even stronger cash flow this year. At $95 per barrel in oil, well under the recent price, the company is going to grow free cash flow by 17% this year and prices could fall to $30 a barrel before the company is operating at a loss. This all helped Devon recently increase its share buyback program to $1.6 billion, nearly triple what it bought back last year and it continues its history of dividend growth. The shares now pay an 8.8% dividend yield and have produced a 117% total return over the past five years. Next on our dividend stock list, one main holdings, ticker OMF, with its 10.4% dividend and a leader in consumer loans. Shares have been hit over the past year, but OneMain is a leader in the space with over 100 years operating history, serving over 2 million customers and originating more than $155 billion in loans. Now that fear of a recession has knocked the shares down, but OneMain has an impressive 20% share on a market opportunity that reaches half a trillion dollars. The Trim app acquisition put it in the financial wellness tech space for growth outside credit and makes it a more diversified business. Management expects to double the customer base by 2025 and generate $1.5 billion in capital growth. Now that would build on the stock's 116% total return we've seen over the past five years, including $14 a share in cumulative dividends paid. We're just getting started on our list of dividend stocks, but a question I hear all the time is, why not just go with those highest dividend yields out there? Investors love chasing the highest dividend yields they can find, and it's hard not to get excited about a stock that pays a 20% dividend. A 20% yield, that would earn you $1,000 a month in dividends on a portfolio of just $60,000. The problem is when you look closer, you see most of those extremely high dividend stocks have destroyed investor value over those years, with the shares crashing, wiping out your portfolio before cutting their dividend. Now, there is nothing wrong with looking for that higher dividend, but chasing dividend yield is a tightrope between high yield and risk, 
And with some of the highest yielding stocks, you're gonna fall off. Our next dividend stock, Broadcom, ticker AVGO, is a rare technology stock that actually prioritizes cash return with a 3.3% dividend yield. Broadcom is a leader in the semiconductor and infrastructure space with an IP portfolio of nearly 20,000 patents, including growth in cybersecurity, automation, renewables, and automotive. Revenue has grown at a 10% pace over the last three years to $27.5 billion, despite the supply chain issues in semiconductors, and the company has managed a 43% annual growth in its dividend payment, something that's hard to find in any dividend stocks and non-existent in tech stocks. What's even more exciting though is the company's $69 billion acquisition of VMware to add virtualization and cloud leadership to the mix. The company is gonna add $13 billion in annual revenue immediately and the public cloud market is growing at 19% a year. VM shareholders will get $138 per share in cash and stock with the deal expected to close early next year. And with the shares as high as $170 just last year, I think Broadcom is getting a great deal. Even better though, management believes it can do this and still commit to that dividend growth and share repurchases, returning 50% of free cash flow as dividends and buying back $10 billion in shares. Including the dividend, shares have produced a 142% total return over the last five years. Drugmaker AbbVie, ticker ABBV, is one of my favorite dividend stocks with a 4% dividend yield and a great way to protect your portfolio in the crash. Drug makers just tend to do well in a stock crash because, well, you need your heart medication whether stocks are up or down, and, and maybe more so when they're down. Abvi is a best-in-class immunology drug company with a strong pipeline in oncology and eye care as well. In fact, most drug pipelines are easy to read on a timeline, but not Abvi. The company has 32 indications in phase three alone, with sales of Renvolk and Skiritsi alone expected to reach $15 billion through 2025. Shares of Abvi have posted a 157% total return over the last five years, and these are one of the fastest dividend growers as well. The dividend has been increased by 18% a year over the last five, boosting that yield for investors. We've still got three more dividend stocks to highlight, but I want to get your input on this as well. What do you look for in a dividend stock? Is it just that high dividend yield or are you looking at the price or other factors? So let me know in the comments what's important to you in dividend investing. This next dividend stock really surprised me. The Buckle, ticker BKE, with a 4.7% dividend yield and even after the 30% drop so far this year, a total return of 205% over the last five years. The Buckle has 440 retail stores in 42 states, offering a mix of casual apparel and footwear. It's a fairly small retailer with a market cap of just 1.4 billion, but somehow manages to put up those big numbers. The company recently reported first quarter sales up 3.3% over the last year to 309 million, with e-commerce about 18% of that. Though net income was down 3% from the last year to $1.12 a share, the company beat estimates by 25% for the quarter. Now, shares of the buckle are about twice as expensive on a price-to-sales basis compared to its competitors, but then it also has an operating profitability of 25%, which is more than twice the industry average. The company has a surprisingly strong balance sheet with only $13 million in net debt, so all the financial flexibility it needs. Overall, if you're looking for a way to diversify your portfolio away from the more typical dividend stocks, the buckle is a good opportunity in consumer discretionary. Blackstone, ticker BX, pays a 5% dividend yield and has produced a 246% total return over the last five years. The firm is one of the world's largest alternative asset managers with almost a trillion dollars in assets under management across real estate, private equity, hedge funds, and credit. Now, I really like this one, not only for that dividend yield and the return, but as a way for investors to get exposure to a, a part of the financial world they wouldn't normally see. Because of the accredited investor rule saying that only those with a million dollars or more net worth can invest, most investors can't participate in those alt assets like private equity or hedge funds. This part of the market is a great diversifier to your portfolio though, and, and shares of Blackstone give you a chance to own a company that owns those assets. Revenue was down 3% in the year through the first quarter, but earnings were up 7%, which means the company is finding ways to improve profitability and protect cash flow. That said, it could still be a tough year for the capital markets and these asset managers, but Blackstone has a history of performance. Ares Management, ticker ARES, is also an alternative asset manager, so similar to Blackstone, and pays a 4.5% dividend yield. Now, Ares is quite a bit smaller at just $325 billion in assets under management, with management across credit, PE, real estate, and secondary trading. 
Now, I like the scale of Blackstone, but it's hard to argue with the kind of growth and return you see with Aries. Aries has proven that it can grow consistently, even in weak markets. This graph shows the growth in fee revenue with even the crisis years like 07 to 09 and through the pandemic, seeing nearly 30% annualized fee growth. In fact, including the dividend, Aries has produced a 285% total return over the last five years. Now, because they are so similar, I don't think you need both Aries and Blackstone in a portfolio, so the choice is size versus that growth here. Look for that sign up link to Aura below, and if you do sign up for the free trial, let me know how many times it found your information leaked on the web in the comments below. Click on the video to the right for a dividend stock portfolio that pays you every week 12 dividend stocks for constant cash flow. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.